What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles back at you with another video. This video is really special because it's another litter video, but this is from a female that I've had for a very long time. This is a female from 2009, so she's about 14, 15 years old. Beautiful female, has given me amazing litters in the past, and I can't wait to show the litter off to you guys. Before I show off the litter, I wanna show you the dad. So the mom is in the bin, she's sitting there with her babies. This is the dad, he is a hypo blood, and I am almost guaranteed gonna call some of these babies super hypos, and I know they're not super hypos, but damn, they really do look like it. He is one of my lighter hypo bloods that I've kept back, and I kept him back because he was light. He's just an amazing looking animal. He's a total stud, he's fathered four to six litters for me in the past. We'll take one more close up, quick look at this guy, really pretty really awesome looking snake hope you guys enjoy the rest of this video so here we have it I have one of my older racks here this was a 100% het blood and this female has consistently given me amazing babies and this year she did not disappoint I saw her doing all kinds of stuff last night moving around really for the past week and she has given me a nice litter of beautiful blood boas hypo blood boas really beautiful litter let's zoom in and get a good peek at these I can't complain about this one and she always gives me I would say a lot of babies there's mom looking very skinny but she will put weight on quickly this is I think her fourth or fifth litter here there's another baby here I don't know if that one was trying to crawl around or a last-minute kick out from mom but beautiful mom Nicaraguan based and this is her beautiful litter of babies that we were just uh, introducing look at the variety in the mix in that I'm gonna put this camera on a tripod and start pulling them and see what we got in the mix. Now that we're all cleaned up, let's take another look at these babies. So we have a really nice mix of bloods, hypo bloods, hypos, normals, some really funky looking stuff in here. Uh, I don't really have them separated in any specific order other than the bloods are over here and the normals and hypos are over here. Really nice stuff. We have what looks to be some super hypo bloods. Uh, that's just an amazing looking boa right there. Then we also have some really funky looking animals. Now these haven't colored up to their full potential, so they will change colors as they develop over the next few weeks, but look at this guy. I mean, if you're into the light color blood stuff, I mean, this is, this is the, the one here. Every year I always produce a handful of light colored ones and they seem to kind of sell and move at different paces. Sometimes people snatch them up right away. Other times they're some of the last ones to go. And when people receive them, they're like, wow, these are the, just the most incredible boas I've ever seen, or this is the most incredible snake I've ever seen. It's not what I was expecting from a blood. And I personally have a couple hold back myself because I just enjoy them. One that I did want to point out that's kind of unique and funky looking was this one. Uh, there is no jungle in the pairing that I had, so this is just kind of a funky looking normal. Uh, every once in a while you get some, some apparent looking babies, but uh, I may even keep this one because it's just a cool looking animal that wasn't expected. It's almost a labyrinth looking type of animal. Very pretty looking eyes. Let's see if we can get them to, to focus in there. It's a really cool looking eyes. Just a, a good mix of babies. I'm very happy with this. That one stillborn was a stillborn or actually it wasn't a stillborn. That was a fully developed baby and unfortunately that's what happens when you don't pull the babies in time. Sometimes the mom, especially a big mom like that, can lay on them or roll over them as they're moving around. The umbilical on that guy was uh, fully detached, so I know that it was moving around and it was out of its its egg sac or its yolk sac uh, embryo, I guess, is in, in bow. So it was out of its embryo and it was moving around, so this little umbilical cord wasn't attached to it and uh, the mom must have rolled over it or, or ran over it and crushed it. Another thing that I've said in other videos, but I want to show off again here, is this is more for breeders in the house when you are breeding babies and you're 
pulling the babies. I'm trying to find one that that has it. This is a good one. So when you're pulling the babies, uh, sometimes you'll see the water's bloody or, or, or there's, there's a lot of blood, they bleed a lot. Um, there's this little knot. So if you look at this little knot right here, there's typically a whole uh, embryo attached to that. If you break it after the knot, you typically don't get blood. Now, occasionally it's hard to do that. The babies are slippery. They're moving through your hands as you're, as you're washing them off or pulling them. And sometimes they do just happen to get separated and, uh, and torn. But uh, we try to avoid it as much as we can. Uh, I, tr I still have it happen to me and I guess this just look, it looks like a big bucket of super hypo bloods or what appears to be, except for this guy in there. Uh, really, really happy with this litter. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these guys out of the water after they've been all washed off and we're gonna put them in their cage that they're gonna stay for the next week or so. Here they are, these are all the babies that we just pulled. As I mentioned, the majority of them are gonna be stacked up into the back like that. Now I did just pull these and just put them in here, so it's only been a few minutes, and they are already all gravitating towards the heat, which is typical of little baby boas. Just go towards the heat, you'll be safe, find a tight spot, and I do keep them all together for the most part. I find that they do much better like this, at least initially starting out, then once they shed out in the next week or so, I will separate them into their own individual enclosures and try to offer them their first meal. Occasionally I will offer first meal with them all in one big group or I'll separate them into smaller groups just so it's not as hectic in there. But that's about it, it's what we do. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. It gave you an inside look at some of the babies that I have coming this season. I've produced all kinds of cool stuff so far and I hopefully have a few more litters coming next. I actually have a female that I thought was gonna lay before this one. Both of their ovulation dates were January 14th. Today is March or May 17th, so it's about 121, 22 days if I'm thinking about that right. You guys can do the math if you want to. These litters don't always happen like clockwork. Sometimes they happen 120 days, sometimes it's 130 days, but as a general rule, 124 days-ish or so is about where they usually occur. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful. Please give me a thumbs up, a like, a subscribe, do all the above, share this video if you found it useful, and don't forget about the Patreon. If you're interested in that, check it out, patreon.com slash Jason's Exotic Reptiles. Until next video, appreciate you guys watching, subscribing, let's keep it moving. Thanks guys.